Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is David Brooks, the Cadillac Counselor, coming at you with something that's on my mind. Uh, I got a good friend with me, uh, Ty Warren. Um, um, I've known I've known Ty since back in man the nineties. Um, um, back when him and my brother um, uh, uh, started football together at Texas A and M. Um, and, and, and they've been friends ever since. And so, um, I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to get him on the show and, um, and, and just ask him some questions about his life and all the things that kind of been, that he's been dealing with, um, just in, in, and everything else. And, and to be honest, he got the COVID just like me. So we both quarantined and, um, and, and I ain't going to waste any more time. So what's up, Ty? What's going on, man? Uh, what's going on? What's going on, bro? You doing all right? Oh man, I'm over here sitting up here trying to, trying to keep from dying over here. People think, <laughs> people think this quarantine thing is, is just something that, that ain't real, but I'm going to tell you this COVID's real, man. Yeah, it is, man. Uh, you know that that deal is, uh, it come you know it come out of nowhere. You know we had a uh, one of our daughters. You know she uh, she 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 tested positive for it, and then uh, you know God come right behind her. You know so uh, trying to be as careful as can be around here, man. And you know fighting fighting through it. I'll be I'll be a horrible cell leader. I'll be I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna tell you, man. It's just, it's just crazy, man. Just how, how, just looking at all the government stuff and everything that we going through, man. I look at like Italy and different, different countries over there, man. They ain't even, they ain't even worried about this no more, like us. You know what I mean? We over here still stuck with masks, quarantine, and then it don't even look like it's gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. What you think, man? Uh, you know, I think uh, I think you're right. I think it's, you know, I think this deal wasn't taken very seriously from the beginning. You know, and it's, as a general, we'll go to soldiers go right, and uh, and so. Uh, I know it's a lot of moving parts, a lot of layers to that, but uh, I think when we should have been taking it seriously, seriously, definitely didn't, you know. Uh, yeah, and it kind of put us behind the eight ball, and uh, I, and I also I almost kind of put you in a in a place of desperation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, you know, where you know you could be getting that per read, and they, they probably shoot you dummies out, out the gate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and so, and uh and so you know what I mean by that. So uh so man, it's it's just kinda it's kinda hard to it's it's tough to kind of sit back and watch that knowing that we could have been a little more proactive rather than reactive to this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get a chance to watch the Super Bowl? I did. I did, man. Uh, you know, I I watched it, uh <laughs> it didn't end up watching me, you know. And probably, that's probably when, uh, that's probably right around the time, cause I, cause I had talked to your bro, cause, uh, we were supposed to go over Rocky House. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I talked to him, you know, uh, cause I just, I was feeling terrible that day. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I had a bad headache and kind of went to bed, you know, kind of the night before to kind of went to bed. And, you know, one of them sleeps like, man, I slept hard. Like, you know, <laughs> like somebody almost like, I don't know, like somebody almost just knocked you out and you just woke up like, man, I slept hard. You know what I mean? Like, where that come from? And then from that boy, I just went down here. But, you know, just terrible headache, all that good stuff, man. And so I ended up calling your brother there and telling him, you know, I wasn't going to make it because I was scared. I had a pimp in 103 at that time. How how big is it that that Brady won the the, the – um, that one extra ring that nobody else has ever won before. How how special is that for real? Man, that's uh that's pretty historical, bro. It really is. Uh you know, you, you kinda on the outside looking in, you know, you kinda you know, although forty three years old, man, you kinda root for him because of, you know, 
uh, what it seemed like happened, you know, in terms of this. He, he he automatically when he got released he automatically became the underdog right yeah and so and so uh, I don't know I'm kind of an underdog type of person you know no no indictment on anything else and uh, I think you know no bias the fact that I played with him or anything like that but you know I think it was just a it was just attractive to know that you know and knowing him knowing that he had something to prove you know what I'm saying. Yeah, he was, he was out to prove it, and it was just it was kind of it was beautiful to sit back and just watch that unfold. You know what I mean? You already I mean, you already held the trophy with him, so you yeah. already know that experience. You know what I mean? Just to win one or two, but to win what is it seven? Seven out of ten. And That's I, I mean, crazy. Yeah, I mean, like and, and like fun fun fact. You know, I was just watching. Uh, Somebody talked the other day. I don't even remember who it was, but it was they were just talking about how, you know, if you want to take his twenty-one year career and break it into seven, you know, seven, seven, seven. Yeah. Uh, that you know he had a Hall of Fame career in each of those seven years, based wow. on based on his achievement. Um, you know. As a as a quarterback in this league, won the Super Bowl and been in the Super Bowl for like ten times, dude. Like really, from the first time that you were actually handed over the wheel, yeah, to the time that you took the wheel to Tampa, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like that's like that's greatness, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I sit back and like watch like uh, like LeBron, you know, uh, and I know you know people like to compare him and uh, MJ and I, I try to avoid that, you know, just because I think it was just, just two different Two different, different eras. Two yeah, different eras. Yeah. And, you know, you, like you can't compare my era with Deacon Jones and, you know, and, and, and me and Joe Green. Like it was just certain things allowed then that just wasn't allowed when I was playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and on and on and on. So, but I understand people got to compare. But even the fact that that dude been to the championship, you know, ten times as well, and you know, regardless if he only won five or not, I mean, it's at least at least five of them times where you like he took some team to the to the to the finals, and it's like, like this dude really will these dudes to the finals, like man, and they was like they were garbage, you know. What to man? be honest, I thought it was gonna be a laughing stock after the first four games. I was yeah. like, man, this dude and that just wasted his time, you know what I mean? But then when I started seeing the, like, Antonio Brown get scooped up, I started mm -hmm. seeing these pieces falling in there, and then they got that defense so, so, yeah. so lined up. I was like, yeah. wait up. And I, and I compared those two athletes, uh, and, you know, and LeBron and, and, uh, and Brady, because one thing I really just, like, love about them dudes, like, what? like genuinely love about them, is yeah. that these guys are ultimate team players. You know what I'm saying? And so not only are they they great in their own right and their own drive and motivation, is is that, you know, they make others believe in themselves around them. You know, most will put uh, you know, Peyton uh in front of Brady. Um, uh, you know, I I mean I would argue that too. I mean, you know, because Peyton was just kind of given the rings early on and just very smart and he was like running it like it was just unheard of to run your own offense you know uh at that time he did it straight out of college you know yeah. and that was like that was crazy you know what i mean so you automatically you know from the from the outside looking in you know you kind of give him the nod uh when them guys were early early in competition and that's not to say brady couldn't you know uh you know i think you know it, it was one of those things too, where you know uh, he was cutting his teeth too. You know what I'm saying? He was cutting mm -hmm. his teeth. Um, you know, uh, and he very, very intelligent, very smart guy. Uh, but man, he just kind of superseded anything that anybody thought or could have thought, or any you know placeholders or any restraints or parameters that you could place around that dude. Man, he just he just kicked the door down. You know what I'm saying? And 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 he did it as a you know as a as a guy's guy. You know he's a guy that you can see how them guys gravitate around him. How yeah. he's not uh, how, how he's not too 
you know, he, he's not too big to, you know, kick it with the guys and hug them and, you know, tell them all that stuff. And I would I would argue that, you know, when he was cutting his teeth back in the day and it was a defensive led uh deal uh yeah. back then, you know, uh he had some great leaders to learn learn from, same leaders that I learned from the McGinnises of the world and, you know, uh the the Brewskis and the Ty Laws and guys, you know, guy guys like that, man, which it was a very selfless uh locker room, but you know, we held everybody accountable. Um, what back in your let's say what back in your childhood prepared you for you making it to the league, you know, to be able to handle all the pressure that comes from being in the league? I think uh, I think growing up uh, where I grew up, uh, which, you know, uh, they, they got a, a special name for where I grew up. In. And uh, I know you, you got like uh, you got L.A. and Chicago and gangsters and stuff like that and i ain't saying i grew up like in the baddest place but every place got a place right yeah and, and uh and so uh you know i grew up around some 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 good guys but you know some guys that were trying to figure it out you know knuckleheads and, and uh you know in the midst of that you know uh you see that i was, I was four years younger than you know everybody that I grew up, grew up around, but I was just as big as them. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, so you know when the summer came around and it was, you know things going on and stuff like that. Man, I, you know my mom she just let me just you know uh, go kick it and stuff like that. And I probably had uh, a certain set of rules, or uh, she put she put somebody in charge of me and, and said like if I stay out there past a certain time then you know i better be at this person's house type of deal yeah and, uh, but you know it's just all the games and the smith and quinn and the, and the football game that i played back in the day because you know believe it or not i used to get knocked all up on the cars and the ditches you know we used to play really like be playing tackle like like you, you would thought we had pass on we was like really hit you know what yeah. i'm saying and yeah. uh <laughs> and, and like we had like you know we'll have we'll roll up the uh the little bath towel and, uh, and like and make it like a little neck roll and yeah it uh, had like the little duct tapes around it and tuck it into your shirt and you know be rocking around like you're you know what I'm saying a nineteen uh like you're a a a, a, a killer or buckets yeah. you know what I'm saying <laughs> and uh and man you know, Haley back in that day because Haley was yeah. one of my favorite, favorite players for the Cowboys back in the day. Yeah, but uh, but uh, but yeah, man, just it it was just always live. It was always like competition. It was always competition with the other side of town. You know, just being, you know, um, you know, being in school, and you know, although we played on the same teams and stuff in high school, you know, um, just the, just the small talk, small trash talk conversation that would happen in the morning before school, and I, uh, you know, when the summer hit, you know. We go come to Oak Grove, and all right, you know, we go come to City Town. We'll come to East Park, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Like, it was always live. It was like we go watch a Bulls game or a Rockets game, and then we'll be at the park. We we'll have our own finals. You feel me? Like and be be playing at like one at night, you know. And um, and you know, and a lot of times I wasn't always the first one picked just because I was younger and stuff like that. But as time went on. Uh, and I kind of found myself as an athlete and stuff like that. You know, they let me, you know, go in there and wet my beak a little bit back in the day. Because, like I say, you know, my, uh, you know, I, I kind of had free range to an extent. You know, yeah. so you know, uh, just going back on all the social injustice stuff that you know we all uh, have been just harping on for pretty hard here over the past year. Or so, uh, yeah, but you know, has been you know noticeable in our culture for a very long time. You know. Uh, when you think about, you know, my story or, you know, you, you know, your story or just, you know, right on down the line, you know, guys that we know, um, yeah. that that's why this, you know, it's so, it, it's George Ford is like a, uh, is a, is an igniter, you know what I'm saying? I would call it an igniter. Um, but I would say also there was something that we were all kind of numb to, you know what I'm saying? And, we, and I think when it caught fire, I think it was just something that, like, we was kind of like, okay, let's see how this go, you know. And then, like, by the time 
you know, we kind of get the ball rolling and then you start seeing some of the, the movement and the marches and all that stuff and, and not everybody looking like us, you know, uh, seeing, um, seeing the wrong and what was done. So young, especially young people, and I'm not talking about young black kids, I'm not talking about young white kids, but I'm just saying young kids in general. Uh-huh. What do you think it is is the hardest thing for them to to overcome in order to be successful? What is it? I mean, because you coach young kids. I mean, you're around them. Um, you've even, you know, started leagues and stuff for them to play. You know, what is the hardest thing for these young people nowadays? I just what like to go back this a, this a, uh, one step and, yeah. uh, and also say that uh, just going back to that, uh, that social injustice deal that we talked about. Yeah. Um, you know, I've made it. I've made it real clear to people that I've talked to that uh, that it's it's not like a black or white thing or brown. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's a right or wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, uh, and so, um, you know, just let me say that. You know, because I don't ever want anybody to think that it's about something that it's not. So your question, uh, Dave, is is like. I think the biggest thing that people have to overcome is self, really, man. I got a saying, I don't know if I saw it so well. I, you know, cause I just sit back and just think about isms in my head all the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, just being a coach and stuff like that. Like, how can I convey a message uh, and it stick, you know what I'm saying? And it yeah. don't really involve like any cussing or belittling or just be great, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm yeah. always thinking about those type of phrases. Uh, in my mind or whatever, and um, it's it's a deal that I always tell guys, man. It's you know, it's you, it's you against you. You know what I'm saying? Um, now for a kid, right? That's uh that's coming up. Like you know, when I say like the youth, the youth programs and stuff that I would do when they hadn't been loved, they don't know what love is. Then they don't mm-hmm. know love when they see it coming, right? And yeah. so like you got a lot of kids um, that you know that have guardians or whatever. Um, that's in charge of their guardianship. And I see a lot of like this parents like failing their kids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say failing their kids? Well, because uh, I see it all the time. I see. Yeah. I see drug addicts. I see people that be in a sneakers game. They be walking around with brand new Air Force Ones, yeah. fur, number ones, 12 J's, and they kid be looking like they just fell off a truck. That fall in the category of just, you know, selfishness, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, you know, it, the strings, the strings that I'm, I'm that the things I was involved with, and the attachment, it all, it, it, you know, it, it attaches back to what we just uh, talked about uh, just a second ago. So, um, you know, I say it's tricky because, like, if it's a single mom, right, and we are playing, you know, um, you know, we are playing football or whatever, seven or seven, and, you know, uh, her baby is a baller, you know, um, that's a little man. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like that baby can't do no wrong. You know, um, yeah. You know, uh, and so you put see, him on a pedestal. Everybody, ain't, everybody ain't like this, but you get some of that, and you get a lot of blind leading the blind, and like you know, people making promises that they can't really, you know, they really can't cash and stuff, and so. Um, and so you got a kid that can really benefit from some, from some structure and some discipline, but you can't really, really do it. Uh, you can't go there a hundred percent because, well, my baby ain't coming to practice today. My, baby, you know, and I'm like, yo, so I'm like, well, you know, he can't play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I can't play. You know what? Well, I need to go to another team. Well, you know, I'm sorry. You know, you got to do yeah. what you got to do, but you know, I can't set the precedence for. One the thing, team. you know what That's I'm saying? The team. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and so you know, you you deal with some of that, and then you got you know, it does a lot of blind leading the blind, man. It just uh, just a lot of selfishness that goes on, uh, and and people, you know, they talk about the process, but they ain't really, they ain't really uh, about it. 
that ain't about the process, bro. You know, and, and I think that's like the the whole the, process. Really, the whole thing for the practices and the development that takes place for the game, right? Because um, yeah. you know, it's kind of the whole analogy. My my good friend and uh, God rest his soul, uh, Junior Say, you know, I was talking to him one time, and he was like. I was like, man, Junior, you know, he was like 17 years in. And I was like, bro, I like, bro, like, how are you running around this practice field like this at 17 years? Like, yeah. I'm hurting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, he was like, he like, in his words, he was like, buddy, he said, you know, he said, I get paid to practice. I play the games for free. Wow. Um, and I always tell, you know, uh, guys that I, that I come in contact with, I always uh, remind them of that. And if you go back to that, that, that youth development program and stuff that I was doing, you know, just trying to get people to understand that, like, what you're paying for is really the practices. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. the games, the games I can get, I can go to the park and, 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 and let my tailgate down and have 20 kids up on the back and we can go play a game right now today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's, about, it's about the discipline, you know, uh, you know, the restraint, the uh, the attention to detail, the retaining. Uh, you know, you know? married children and all of that. What What is, I, I mean, I know you don't have to work if you don't want to. You know, you do whatever you desire to do. That's what I'm trying to get to, to the point where I can just decide what to do. The question that I got to ask you is, what is it that fulfills you now? You know, you got the Super Bowl. You got all of the accolades and, you know, you, I know you're not struggling. So what did, what what makes Ty Ty when you have anything that you ever can want in life? Uh, I called my uncle. It's really my wife's best friend's dad. So we we was out in the country one time, and uh, and, and uh, he's a, he worked for an aluminum plant for many years, and uh, and we was just out hanging, kicking out at their house, fishing and all that stuff. And uh, this was during the time I was playing, and it and uh, it really he said something that really sunk in to me. You know, he said uh, he said Ty, you know, I've been working at that plant for. 30 some, probably almost 40 years, right? Since he got out of high school, basically, right? Um, he said, you know, I got this 50 acres, this little house right here, 1,700 square foot. I got me a few cows running around here. Uh, got me a few ponds here. I can go, you know, I can go dry the worm. I can do pretty much anything uh, I need to do, you know? And uh, this, this is us just talking. It wasn't even about nothing other than just like some wisdom. And he was like, uh, he was like, man, he said, he said, oh, this is what you see right here? He said, it ain't much, but it's mine, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I really was like chewing on that. You feel me? Cause I was like, cause in a, in a, in a, in a profession that's so um, aggressively competitive, like, mm -hmm. you know, I know that like it's a famous term now, like pocket watching, you know, like, well, you know, it's a lot of that goes on. I mean, the tickets, you know, makes everything public, everything. So, you know, you can get, you can fall into a situation where, you know, you making what you make and then a year later, somebody at your position make a little bit more and now you chasing that, you know, and you just basically chasing your tail, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. the, thing, the thing I had to realize for myself is like, cause I always told myself like in 10 years, you know, I was gonna revisit things and likely just kind of just shut it down, you know? And so, um, but that kind of sealed the deal for me because I'm looking at it like, okay, uh, there's some other things, some other interests I have, you know, um, and, you know, I can go and I can continue to play and play, you know, 12, 13, 14 years or whatever, um, 15, 16 years, you know, uh, if I wanted to, but if I'm all broke up with a pile of money, I mean, what does all work? You feel me? What's going to make you happy? Like, do, you know, like me, like, um, you know, could I eat a, a filet mignon steak and hit root press every day and, you know, and do all that? Yeah, I probably could, you know. Um, you know, growing up on press ham and goose liver and 
and and, and bologna and you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, with the dome, the, the dome bologna with the, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, cut it at the top. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. So you know, like, do I need to? Do it? I mean, if I can do that every day, yeah, I can do it. But do I need to? Like, I mean, what's my roots? Where do I come from? You know, what I'm saying not to say that I'm gonna go back and eat bologna again, because that's what you work hard to not <laughs> eat, eat yeah. you know, bologna. Um, but if I had to, I would. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You know to uh, you know. Make sure my family have whatever so programs or anytime I did any uh, mentorship or you know uh, this coaching now you know it's like that's my ministry you know what I'm saying yeah. like like yeah. God like, like God is uh, you know bless uh, me you know my family um, in ways unimaginable so um, you know so to be able to um, spew some wisdom on somebody that, that needs it or don't know they need it and they you just kind of accidentally just kind of spill a little bit on their shirt you know um you know that's that's my aim you know what i'm saying like yeah um to to give whatever i have to people who seeking it and who want it you know what i'm saying uh, something that we haven't gotten to that you probably got in the question line um is our daughter so i'll wait for you you know, to bring that up now, but, and I know, I know that you know, um, you know, when I heard about you losing your daughter, um, you know, when Andre told me, man, I almost, I was just, I, I just, I just got stuck in my tracks, like I, I couldn't even, I didn't even know where to even think or start to think or just, you know, all the questions, and then my heart was just my heart was just hurting for you guys. And, 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 um, I don't know, man, how did you get through that? To be honest, all of that. It was God, uh, bro. And, uh, and, when, and, and as, as it relates, um, you know, his, his arms around our family, you know what I mean? Um, uh, and our immediate family, those who, you know, not that, like, we got a lot, ton of people that care about us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we thankful for those people, but I think it was important for us to kind of uh, isolate. Uh, you know, uh, be mindful of who we let in and who, um, you know, and, and who we let our kids out to. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. really protect their sanity. You know, and, and protect our sanity, and really kind of. Uh, like really to redefine who we who we are as a as a family, you know what I'm saying? And and for me personally, you know, um, I would say that like after that, you know, some things that I just started to like sit back and peel back the lids on was like like I'm a big like appreciation type of person, you know what I mean? So um so it was things that I had given my time to that my wife was like Tired of people don't appreciate you. They ain't, they ain't appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. You know, like, hey, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to just, you know, stop in the middle of what I'm doing? Like, let's let me get to the finish line, and then I'll be done with it. Like, you know, and yeah. uh, and you know, all that stuff just kind of came back and hit me in the face uh, because I just, you know, I, you know, I'm sitting back thinking like, like my 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 level of on appreciation and just like went from like here, you know, and it went like here, like cold yeah. red, you know what I'm saying? To where it's like, you know, like I'm so protective of our time to where like, it ain't even funny. Like, like I, man, you know, you know, I do some things about our time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that's how I feel about it, you know, uh, based on, based on that, because I'm thinking like, man, you know, if I knew, well, if we knew that our baby was gonna be on this earth for two years, that time I'm spending with people that didn't appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I could have been giving that to them, you know, or for, to her, you know what I'm saying? But you know that ain't, that ain't the way God designed design things. But you know, we walk away from that deal. I feel like uh, much stronger than we than we were before it happened. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's a lot because on the surface. You know, anybody that knows us, you know, would think everything is all perfect and everything like that. But as you know, um, we all go through our little, you know, trials and tribulations just in general, whether it be 
you know, uh, you know, in marriage with our kids, just in life, just trying to, you know, always calibrate um, our families and our situations to the best possible situation. You know what I'm saying? And understanding how much energy, you know, priority we're going to place on each thing that's, uh, that's important to us. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, well, all I would say to you is, is that I appreciate um uh, everything that you do, especially for my brother, because I know um, uh, you and him have always had a bond. And with me moving to Maryland, I don't get a chance to hang out anymore. You know what I mean? Like when I come in, it's for like a week at a time and then I'm gone again, you know, and and um, and and I've always just appreciated your story. It feels like we're all family and and just the fact that you were able to come on here and 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 do this for me and 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 give my people uh, a new voice to hear and and be able to tell your story about what you who you are and what you've done, I think is inspiration alone. You know, it's, like I said, we all brothers, you know, this, and, uh, and, you know, and that goes without saying, you know, uh, and, you know, you know, this much I've been up with Dre, you know, we've been up for each other, you know, uh, and, and that extends, you know, even further to, you know, your parents, you know, um, you know, um, just, you know, seeing, you know, being able to see that uh, and see, you know, who they were as a couple, you know, um, you know, when I was in college and stuff like that. But, you know, that's the thing when you come from, you know, um, you know, so far conditioned or, you know, uh, a situation that's not ideal, you know, just see those examples, you know what I'm saying? So, and then to, to put a stamp on it, man, just that strawberry cake. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, you hey, know, hey. Hey, oh, whew. Whew, hey you know I put a request now for that at least at least once a year. Even, no. that, even if I don't need it or if I, if, 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 I, if, if the request is at an odd time, I still put it in just thinking, you know, just, just so I can roll out my lip, just so I can just – you know, even if I'm just trying to taste it mentally, you know, uh, I always I put it in Andre Hill. Or if I'm talking to uh, Dukes, I you know, or uh, uh, Pop or whatever, man, I I, uh, I mentioned it to him, man. But I mean, you know, just you know, being up each other, man. I mean, that's kind of that's what we Thank do. Thank you, bro. man, and I appreciate you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep keep them kids going, man. Keep your wife going and anything that you do. Um, and, and I appreciate you for following me and giving me advice whenever I ask, um, um, because I think it's just all cool and the way it all works. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, uh, conclude this interview without, you know, just saying, you know, how strong wires and stuff that we have, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You know, man, I think, um, you know, once you reach adulthood and and you uh, and you're trying to, you know, you want to provide, you want things, you want to try to get some things done uh, to have um, someone that's working beside you and, uh, you know, in a supporting role or what have you, um, you know, I think uh, we have some of the, some of the best wives there uh, that that God can provide us with, man. So you know, definitely don't want to want to acknowledge that, man. And uh, and and yeah, man. So you know, didn't didn't want to end the interview without that. Yeah. Well, yeah. man, keeps being healthy, man. Keep on drinking your drinks, um, and let's get healthy together. You know, that little remedy. <laughs> Uh, let's yeah. get let's get healthy together, and and next time I come home, uh, I'm gonna make sure that, that that we get a chance to go hang out and grab some root crisp or something like, like that. Right. You know what I mean? All we can right. get that thing butterflies. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> How you want that fish? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah, well, well, I look forward to it. I look yeah. forward to it. Man. Definitely, man. Tell the wife, tell the family. I said, hey, and I love you, man. Take it easy. I love you too, bro. Be good. All right. Take it easy, man. Thanks, man. All right. Bye.